Hello and welcome to the Nick OG Art and Comics Podcast. We've got one hell of an episode for you guys today. I'm sitting down with the great Adam Eater, an indie comics champion and an amazingly talented creator. I've gotten to know Adam and his work through Facebook groups, and I really admire his books, his promotion, and his hustle. He also runs a great YouTube channel called Small Press Express. Go give him a sub. The link's in the description. Today we'll be talking shop, indie books, getting into the weeds on strange tangents, and laughing a lot. This interview was an absolute blast. Let's get to it. Let's get into it. Uh, what was your first comic? How old were you? Uh, and uh, do you remember anything about its particulars? Uh, like the one I read? Yeah, like the first comic you ever uh, you ever remember reading. Oh, yeah. It was at a laundromat in a fucking, uh, in Florida. It was, uh, what's it, like Joe Kubert War Comic. Oh, cool. That shit. I, I love the old War Comics, some of them. They're, some of them are so stupid and hokey. But, Rain, yeah, Rain has never Joe looked Kubert. better. The, yeah, the, Joe, a... the Joe Kubert war comic reign. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it. It's so good. And then I saw one of the, the silent strip he did was in there. And now fucking, whoa, that blew my mind. There's a bunch of other, there was a bunch of gold key stuff in that stack. I got a bunch of stuff for like a few bucks and the gold keys were always an influence on me. No one ever talks about them. Mm-hmm. They're called gold key comics. And uh, what was the other one? They were everywhere in Del? Ohio and Florida. Dell. Yeah. Dell. <laughs> Dell. Those were a huge influence on me. Mad magazine. My dad always had mad magazines on the toilet. <laughs> so I would read those, but yeah, I, I was huge. Um, I still, to this day, Don Martin is one of my favorite creators of all time. And I think when I tell people that, then they kind of get blood desert more because okay. you see what I'm kind of leaning towards. Yeah. Cause I just love his work is really dark. I got that huge thing they did of his work and it's just, it's fucking brutal, dude. It's really dark and weird. Matt was doing some great shit back in the day. And Don Martin's one of my top pro. He has spy versus spy. Yeah, yeah, those are my biggest. Thing. One last day is essentially spy versus spy. He dies at the end. He's, you know, of every page, and that's essentially what they did. People look at my stuff and go, "Oh, it's so violent." It's like, well, I'm just kind of, I'm just regurgitating <laughs> what I was seeing as a kid. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, what What's your favorite comic of all time? Um, right now, it's that bench book that I mentioned, uh, Shabado. I don't know. I can't say his name. Um, that's one of my favorites, and. Um, uh there's there's three that one right now is the top three and then there's war machine the uh, rogue trooper book the painted rogue trooper comic i think dave gibbons did okay cool like that. i'll have to check that rogue out rogue trooper war machine it's fucking beautiful it's all watercolor and the story's so visceral and good and then there's another one um the apocalypse eyes of doom it's okay. a fully painted comic uh i can't remember the guy's name that's my favorite book of all time. I think it's the best comic I've ever read. It kind of reads like a Big Trouble in Little China. Like, yeah, it's it's, but it's it's beautifully painted. It's full. It's all watercolor, and the artist is just phenomenal. I think he just recently died. He used to do stuff for heavy metal. Oh, nice. But I, that's what I'm really into is that stuff that that fully painted, um, beautifully rendered comics like that. Yeah. But yeah, Apocalypse Eyes of Doom. Dude, those things are going for like three bucks. They were on eBay or something, and they're hardbound. It's, it's one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. It's gory. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's so good. I, I featured I, I featured it on my channel, and I took it down because of copyright shit. Okay. So be, yeah, if you can find that book, it's so good. The cover is like, oh, this looks lame. And then you open it. It's like, this is some of the best comics I've ever read. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of my top ones. Nice. Uh, how about, uh, do you have a favorite writer? I, I'm going to guess Alan Moore, maybe. <laughs> um you know sadly i've only read a little bit of his stuff okay. i'm more of a defender than, than a fan <laughs> um <laughs> uh, i would say uh writer um i don't really focus on comics for writing it's just yeah so sometimes i'll find a good story and be like um is it matt wagner was he a writer the guy that did the dread stuff uh yeah matt or wagner did um uh, grendel and stuff like that the other guy, uh, the guy that used to write all the dreads. I okay. really liked his stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The guy had some pro. ideas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all that 2000s stuff. Really well written. I think it was written for the artist too. you know, like mm-hmm. here it's start, do what you want. And yeah. amateur <laughs> artists too. Like it's like they, they found yeah, so yeah. many greats. Like, I mean, we just mentioned Gibbons. Like that's where he got his start. I do believe like so many people. Did you see that documentary where they said that all those pages were just like floating in a flood? <laughs> yeah, that documentary. 
Oh, I just wanted to cry. They said stacks of pages were just floating in the basement. Brutal. <laughs> oh, That's why you don't see any Dutch Dread pages on the secondary market. Yeah. There's I, none. Do you think like they, all, they all were ruined? Do you think like 2000 AD sent their own pages out? Like, because that was a thing back then. Or do you think that because it's in Britain, do you think they were just cutting their own pages and shit? Because like either would be kind of conceivable. <laughs> no. Oh, I don't know. They Especially... said none of those, that none of those pages exist. Hmm. And you can't buy an original uh, Boland. They're all they were all ruined in that flood, I guess. Brutal. They said a marble. There was stacks in there, was just water dripping on them. Yeah. Did you hear the story? I've heard the story where there was a janitor that was saving all the um, the art. And the, back in the old day, the science fiction art and stuff, they would just toss it. They would mm. just throw it in the trash. They wouldn't return to the artist. Like, Fuck you, artist, and throw it away. Well, there's a janitor that would pull in it. And he was put in his fucking garage for like 40 years. And then his family just comes in and goes, what is this? And it's just this treasure. I don't know if this is true or not, but it is a treasure trove of this, uh, like, like, uh, seventies paintings. So yeah. All the pulp stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, think of what was lost by these, just one more thing. Publishers suck, dude. (laughs) What? You know, can you imagine throwing away for Zetas? They threw away for Zetas. He had to fight to get them back. Because yeah. once he found out they were trashing him, he's so pissed off. What the fuck, dude? And probably cutting them uh, off of everything to make them photograph better, <laughs> doing whatever yeah, they want like, to him. Take the ones that weren't slashed. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. What a bunch of dicks, dude. <laughs> um, how about uh, artists? Do you have a favorite artist? Um, yeah, there's this guy. I think his, I think his name's. He goes by Noman, Brian Noman. I can't remember. He's a risograph artist uh, in Philadelphia. He's, he's, uh, that's what I follow right now a lot. Um, I guess all time would be like Hideshi Hino from Hino Horror. He did a uh, horror fiction in uh, Japan. It'd be like their version, a really gory, gross version of Tales of the Crypt. Oh, cool. Like anthology yeah. series? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, he did short stories. I actually have a tattoo of one of his things. <laughs> like, I am obsessed with Hino. I found him on Twitter. I, I recently deleted my Twitter because I just couldn't take it anymore. So I was like... Uh, I actually was trying uh, to but tag he was you. the only reason I was on there. <laughs> I was trying to tag you last night and I saw that you had deleted it. I was yeah, like, okay, no, fuck that. I'm gone. <laughs> I bailed. I bailed about three weeks ago. I just, I, I'm actually... I've been pulling all my stuff off social media. If you go back into my... On my um, posts on all my social media, I pulled the last... There used to be a lot more posts, and I'm just pulling the... I heard somewhere that if you post it on there, they kind of get some sort of rights to it. So I've been pulling only the stuff that I'm promoting right now. I'll put it up, and then after a couple months, I try to pull it because I I want just a certain amount of work up there. I don't want all my back catalog for them to some way, God only knows, claim it or something. So I just... I've been conscious of social media a lot where I just pull stuff and yeah, yeah, more productive. So lately, it's been real smart. And, I, and Twitter was always a dead zone for me. It's not visual, mm-hmm. so people didn't care. The only time I would get a response is when I make some dick joke or something. So it wasn't even worth it. You know? Yeah. So fuck this. Um, yeah. I think I know the answer to this one. What's more unforgivable, a good story with bad art or a bad story with good art? Uh, it'd be the good art, bad story. <laughs> 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 I, I don't think writing can save a story. A lot, a lot of writers do. A lot of writers do. I know. They're, they're delusional. Because <laughs> I, I see what's out there. <laughs> I think I think one for one, every writer I've had on the podcast so far has said that um, a good story, bad art, is, it, it's okay. Oh, um, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, think about it, though. Like, what can you do for that story? If he's over explaining things, then you're hamstrung. That's such a myopic view. Why have That's this guy? Why have this guy that. like be a drain on your story? Why would you accept that? Why would you just right, write a yeah. novel? Like, so fuck. you mean to tell me a paragraph of text is gonna save like I, I whatever, dude? That's such a cop out. That's uh, great. No <laughs> way. Because like, I'm seeing look, that why comics is dying. It's because nobody wants to read novels, dude. <laughs> nobody wants to read your shitty novel that couldn't fucking pass muster. So you do it in comics. So let's add art to it. That's going to save it. <laughs> no. like, well, yeah, let's let's add bad art to it specifically. And yeah, it's like, yeah, oh my exactly. God. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> so uh, growing up, were you a Marvel or a DC guy? Um, I guess I read more DC. Oh. I used to read Thor when it was coming out. I think Simonson's run. I read that. A lot of the Walt Simonson stuff. That was like when I was a kid, man. But I was also into like 
death and grindcore then. So I kind of was, I kind of lost interest in comics right around that time. I got ripped off by a few stores. Dude, no one's going to believe this. I mean, I shouldn't tell this because it's one of my biggest regrets in life. <laughs> Do you know the Black Rose card or the Black, there's a Black Lotus card? for the magic, magic. gather. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah <laughs> and one of them was sold for one point like nine million. One of those cards was my card. I owned that card. I owned the Black Lotus and I traded it to a local fucking comic store owner. And I didn't know the value of it. And he traded me a bunch of who's who DC comics for it. Oh my oh. God, I want to shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that 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 there's only three of those. And I, I think four and I had one. There's no doubt I had one. It was the card and stuff like that. Like I traded, I was 13. I didn't know anything. And I had just traded a whole run of Excalibur comics for <laughs> the first 10 of the 100 Captain Americas. Captain America 100 to 110. And I went in there and that guy, he saw me coming. I went to that comic store and he's like, I, I'm like, I want this Joust video game. Dude, I traded all 10 of those fucking <laughs> Captain Americans for a joust video game on oh, the man. Atari or whatever. Oh. <laughs> so that's like, I have my regrets about the industry already <laughs> that I probably place on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, it's like, dude, that story, I should have been like, you know how much this card's worth, bro. I can't do this. Like, this, the card at the time was going for like a thousand bucks, I think. Brutal. He should have been like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't let you do this. But fuck no, dude. His his kids are now fucking. They 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 sold it. I'm almost positive it was that guy that that bought that card. So it's like everyone has a regrets, man. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite uh, foreign comic? Oh, um, was the the bench. Um, I like Shitaro Kago stuff a lot. It's pretty good. The little stuff I see, all the the what, uh, stuff what? that's reproduced. Like, do you have like uh, t- a title, a go to? Most of our people just suggest Junji Ito. And while I love Junji Ito, <laughs> it would be nice to have oh, some, right, other, right. some other. We did a super work. dimensional love gun. It's okay. called Super Dimensional Love Gun. That was through a pr- pornographic company, but it's it's not very pornographic. It's just his short stories that were published in Japan. Um, that one might be able to find. Most of the stuff I get through him, he does these little mini comics. I mean, that would be the most. Um, there's also a thing called Mota Comics that I really like. And I have a hard time getting them. And I've done work with him, um, uh, Rolando Mota on Facebook. Uh, they're weed comics uh, that are sold in Mexico and throughout Mexico um, and like uh, head shops. It's like the old school underground comics. They're full color. They're fucking beautiful, man. If you can find those, I have a bunch of them, but they're fucking cool. It's like it's like the old underground comics, the old drug comics, but from a uh, Mexican perspective. It's they're fascinating, man. And I know a little bit of Spanish, so I can kind of translate them myself. And they're fun, dude. They're they're wacky, and and a lot of them are um, things because they're fighting for a legal uh, legalization. And Mota Comics is part of that movement. So yeah, let, support Mota Comics, man. If you could find them, they're really neat shit, dude. That's awesome. He sells those by thousands. I think he does like runs of like twenty, thirty thousand. I'm, I'm assuming because they're on newsprint. And he's using, like, they have a lot of periodicals down there. So I think he's using their system to do comics, too. Nice. But, Newsprint's yeah, the way I mean, to go, there's man. There's a world of comics. Newsprint's, yeah. like, that's, that's the way to, like... It is. Uh, I, I know. My last print run, uh, 700 books, 57 cents a copy, wow. full color. Like, you can't fuck with that. Like, killer. <laughs> like, it's, 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 turn me on who you did that with. Because <laughs> I, I want to do a full-size newsprint book okay and yeah like, like wednesday like, comic style full, yeah that'd like be a big sick. one and just do a limited run black and white just like an old newspaper that i can kind of hand out and sell for a buck or something awesome but yeah that's that's what i'm really into is mass production low cost it would be even cheaper to do it would be even cheaper to do the like full-on newspaper because you get charged per cut right so it like the way that it oh, wow. holds oh, and you stuff. Cut. so as soon as it, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh i'm gonna look into it'd it it'd be even easier local yeah, but who knows? But I want the big format, the really like yeah, oh, yeah. seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you, okay, so like I'll get into a bit of my nutia here. So the uh, the way that newsprint comics worked, and the reason why uh, comics is the f- size it is, is because they used to have like the full size tabloid, right? That's what they call it. So right. when they were making a comic book, what they do is they print it in that size. So they fold it once over, like you would for a tabloid, and then you fold it in half, and then you fold it this way and staple it, and then Ooh. cut. Cut, cut the it. top and bottom. Oh, well. So then I see. suddenly you have this bound book and all it, it all it took was your newspaper press. 
Yeah, so, I worked at a telephone book factory in Oregon for a while, and that was bonkers. But yeah, you could kind of see what they would do as these giant web presses, the sheets. Mm. And I'm like, I want to get that big. I want to I be like, I have some stuff that Comics Comics did in San Francisco. And those things are cumbersome to read. I want it to be almost, you have to lay it on the floor to read it. And that's <laughs> what I want to do. I want, I'm really into that, like interacting with books. Like I'm making a book now that has a book in it. So you you read it and then the little book inside that book tells more of the story. So, and then you go back to the main part of the story. So nice. I'm really into um, creativity and, and production. Yeah. I think that's a lot lost too, you know, um, the, the fine art of uh, the different methods of printing we have. I mean, we were spoiled. We have all this access and shit, and now we're like, you know, just uh, neglecting it. Yeah, that, that's a really cool idea. But the book in a book, like intertextuality in uh, in comics, is something I've never really seen. So that'd be really cool. Yeah, a lot of people don't explore the physical nature of comics. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like um, having to interact with the medium. What uh, yeah. what projects do you have coming up or in the works? Um, just like I said, I'm finishing up Blood Desert. I've actually like finished the whole story, kind of. So once I'm done with that, I'm pretty much, and then I have like one or two more books of World of Nongs, and then I'm pretty much done, you know, I'm like, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited because I know something's there, I just don't know what yet, if that makes sense, like I don't know what I'm going to work on next. That's always, it breeds a lot of anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> it's daunting um, and it's uh, freeing. But I have a lot to do still, like... Like, I have a ton of books that I just need to finish up. But after that, I don't know. I want to do, I don't know. I really want to do a full color work, a long form, fully co full color, um, a watercolor, and then, you know, ink on top of it. But I want to do a long one, like a, like a two or 300 page book. But I don't know what the story would be. And it's kind of just how I work as I just kind of will get an idea and then I'll slowly just keep hammering away at that until I get what I like a more original idea than the initial one and then move on from there but yeah How one last day is pretty much done the blood desert finishes one last day so there's no reason for me to really do much in that and world of nonks i thought about doing stuff for that but it's so long that it would just be just um pieces added to it like i'll do stuff for one uh, blood desert in the future but it's just little side stories they won't add to the canon as much. You know what I mean? The story's told. It's all there. It's all done. So I just got to finish drawing it. So I don't know, man. That question bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know. I, I, it's exciting, you know, because it's like I'm on this new thing. Yeah. I just don't know exactly what I'm going to do next um, to, um, to you know, down that road. I want to do something very arty, like the newsprint, something full size, something that's just completely different than what I've ever done. Who knows? Cool, man. I've seen uh, your watercolor. You've mentioned uh, I've seen it on um, your YouTube channel. Do you scan it yeah. in, or do you photograph it when you use it for reproduction? Because that's all that I scan them. Okay, because yeah. a lot of people the, the find it a bit muddy. Or... It does. It doesn't look as good as like a uh, as like doing it on computer. But it, I like it though. I like the. It has a rough underground quality and the reprint and what I, I found ways around it like if you scan them at a real low exposure then the the the, the scanner tends to not oversaturate the watercolor okay you see what i'm saying yeah and the printer will help too the printer will like he'll, if he if sometimes if the printer doesn't adjust it they look like shit I and mean, then if he adjusts on his end a little those levels they look great so it just depends you know watercolor is really great that's actually my apprehensive that's why i'm apprehensive about doing a full book in watercolor because the blood desert books are coming back and their colors are great but they some of the the subtleness of the the originals they're just lost and i think that's just something i have to accept but maybe if i could go to a higher end printing you know maybe print it on matte instead of gloss just different things like that i don't know but yeah i'm gonna figure out some way to to make that watercolor look a little better. That's why I'm apprehensive to do a full book because they'll all just kind of look a little washed out like the covers do. And But then some covers will look amazing. It just depends on how heavy, like for some reason, blues don't scan well, but like tans and stuff do. Mm -hmm. So it's just all kind of, I don't know why, like the skies always get washed out. So you just weird little shit like that working with watercolor. But yeah, I mean, photographing would be a nightmare. We tried that. Oh yeah. And it yeah. sucked. Yeah, yeah so I just sure. bought a really nice um, or a shitty home scanner with a really good uh, DPI setting. 
So I just scan them super high. And I don't do any of my formatting. A friend of mine, Zach Finger, who works in comics, he does it for me. Oh, that's So I awesome. just send him all the scans. I'll sit for, I do days of scanning. You know, it'll be 40 pages, all the books, and then just do it and then send them to him. And then I pay him a couple bucks. Now I can afford to pay him. <laughs> I'm doing well enough. But um, yeah, he was doing it for free forever. He's such a great guy. But if it wasn't for him, these books really wouldn't exist. I mean, I, I not as fast, at least. I'd be paying for each one to be formatted. He's just such a great guy. Yeah, it's and he'll just do it for me. Boom, boom, boom. And then we have a great system. Like right now, I'm I'm doing a full uh, Blood Desert book, like all five or all four issues. And I add a little bit to it. It's just going to be this thick ass magazine sized graphic novel. That's I'm awesome, excited man. about that. Yeah, did a new cover for it too. So yeah, I mean, I'm now I don't know. Like, I don't. I think this will be my Blood Desert and World of Nox will be my last single issues. Like, I I don't. I want to work large format from now on. Like, I want to do a hardbound or something. Like, I don't want to. I don't know. I I like doing the single issues, but I feel like they can be a hindrance. And even people, I think they feel that way. Like, I have people wait till all four issues just come out and buy them. Where if it was a full book, they probably were just about the full book. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of just, yeah, I don't know. You have to think about how many I people at, at cons it. that, uh, like, they buy issue one of something that they like that this seems appealing to them, and they'll never see issue two. They've probably been burned so much. Yeah. That, like, it's I, kind I of can, a shame. As someone who's, like, sold, like, a creator-owned number one that never had a number two, I can totally understand any reticence yeah. to do that. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is you got to buy all four because like it really picks up halfway through. Like the beginning is kind of me just testing the waters. But man, after that, it's all fucking bonkers. Like (laughs) you got to jump. You got to be all in. You know, if you don't, if you just kind of read number one, you'd be like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's it's cartoony. But man, it gets really in depth. I mean, the the character grows in those next few issues. You see that whole world and how it exists. And so that's what I think I'm I'm more leaning to towards now. It's just longer, nicer. higher quality made longer format shit that that i can just sell in one pop because my my lottery graphic novel does really well and the singles did great but it's just it's like well what's the point you know what i mean like i just i could just sell the lottery now and and make the same amount essentially the price points are about the same i maybe make a few dollars more you know i could sell a big fat graphic novel for 18 bucks and still make what i'm making off the books so this is where that's where i'm at right now i don't know if i should just keep doing these books it's more work for me to do all those covers, you know? <laughs> so little things like that. I don't know. Like now that I have good stories. So I think if I have a long form story coming up, I'm just going to do one big fat book. It's just where the market is right now. Hmm. You know, graphic novels are selling and it's not the floppies. Everyone's saying comics is doing great. Well, it's not really comics. It's the flaw. It's the, and it's true. I sell a ton of those lottery graphic novels. So I think people just want to just kind of get all their story in one little bang. Hmm. That's, but I think where floppies can exist is one shots. That's my one shot floppies do, sell really well. Yeah. yeah, they they're like all my little short black and white comics that I the the catalog I built up. Man, they sell really well online. Yeah, because they're cheap. I can I can print them for cheap, like maybe a buck a piece, and sell them for two three bucks. Mm-hmm. And they're short. They're only like five or six. You know, some page, some are eight pages. It's evergreen. Some are pages. It's evergreen. Like it's yeah. never not. But that like that's always the latest issue. <laughs> like if there's no reason for it not to be as relevant now as as ever. Like it's, yeah right it, it, yeah and it's it's timeless a lot yeah. of those one shots are timeless so they don't really people I like it's a good jumping point they can just oh okay yeah, this is cool oh, and, the, and i get a lot of repeat buyers almost everyone that buys my books buy more they buy a lot more because <laughs> I'll, I'll usually hook them up with a bunch of stuff so but like i think that's nobody talks about that in comics is the um the return factor that's so important to me as, as a creator right now is, is people coming back to buy my books. You know, it's great that I sell one or two comics to some guy and then he moves on, but I don't want them to, man. I want them to, to stay with me and, and keep reading my stories. And a lot of, I don't think a lot of indie creators are doing that. They're kind of just do hit or miss or this and that. And it's like, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta get these people latched on, you know, you're like, a, you're like a drug dealer. <laughs> you gotta give them a taste. And then once they really like that shit, they'll want more. And, and that's how my work has kind of been. It's like, once they see, and now world of Knox is building its old audience and blood desert is building its own audience because they're two different works completely. So now I have these different cults forming in those sections where I've diversified. It's kind of world of Knox is a, like a, almost a YA book where blood desert is not at all. So I, 
I think that's missing in comics. Very few creators, they'll just work in one style. I'm only doing auto bio or I'm only doing this. It's like, well, you should do a bunch of different stuff. Diversify. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get it. Like, there's no fucking, there's no creativity in comics, yeah. you know, in the in the publishing or formatting or um, different way. Let, let's think of different ways to produce and create, not just, and then sell those items. You know what I mean? Different ways to promote, different ways to sell. Like, no one's thinking about that shit. They're all just yelling at each other. <laughs> like, well, dude, <laughs> the, the industry's fumbling and, and no one wants to hear solutions. So that's why I do the YouTube channels. And maybe there's some sort of narrative that they don't, they don't want to hear or haven't heard. And maybe some young creator will see it and go, oh, hey, this guy's, this guy's making a point. I can just do it myself, you know? And yeah. That's kind of why I set the channel. Speaking of that, uh, what advice would you give to someone just starting out their comic making jersey? Just do uh, it. Just print a comic. <laughs> you're you're successful. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, don't become a lawyer. <laughs> I tell my kids, <laughs> don't be a creative. It's bro It's brutal, dude. Being a creative creative sucks, dude. You know how many fucking times I've heard no. I've heard no ugh, for a hundred to one. It's like dating at this point. <laughs> I just wait for one to say yes, hopefully. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and you, it's just, it's endless. It's an endless barrage of fuck off in the art world. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, it's not just, it's comedy, it's movies, it's, so I don't know. Like, uh, what was your original question? I'm sorry. Uh, just advice to anyone starting out. <laughs> Oh yeah, advice. My advice would be be a lawyer. All right, this is <laughs> this is actually this is a breakdown. I used to tell uh, kids, and when I would do my inking classes, okay. So I would tell them, okay, imagine you're a dishwasher, and you have to buy all the dishes for a restaurant and learn how to wash them, and you need to learn how to wash those dishes for about ten years until you're so fucking good at washing dishes that you can go to restaurants in your town. And then show them how good you are at washing dishes. And then every single one of those restaurants is going to tell you how bad you are at washing dishes. <laughs> and then you're going to keep washing those dishes for even longer. And then maybe if you're really lucky, you'll show one person your skills at washing dishes. And they'll go, damn, dude, your dishes are fucking sick. You're hired. And that's <laughs> kind of where the corporate and art world is. It's like, look at it as a real job. If you don't treat this seriously, it's not going to treat you seriously. You know, doing fan art and all that, it's just a time burner. And I think the best advice is avoid that. Create your own stories, create your own world, build, build a world and don't do fan art. Like leave that shit behind. I think the best thing that's going to happen in the industry is the conventions and all these people that were in it to just make a quick buck on these 11 by 17 Deadpool Spider-Man mashup prints. They made their careers on this shit. I think a lot of those dudes will fall to the wayside. The photorealistic pencil know. crayon people. <laughs> yeah. And the commissions are all gone. All this shit that was supporting this kind of derivative function in the industry will, will kind of wane. The opportunists will leave. Does that make sense? Because the, the conventions created a, a platform for the opportunist and pretty much silenced the individual creator like myself. Where... Um, so I think my hope is that the, the whole, the craziness of this will create a more level playing field for people who actually want to create stories. So that like people like me will actually be seen when they're sitting next to a guy with a wall of cover art, you know, mm -hmm. and who has never worked in the industry and doesn't even have the license for those IPs and is selling that shit anyways. You know, so like, I think a, a, my hope is that some of these inequities will slowly be addressed in the industry yeah you know i mean god that's the pipe dream uh, we got uh we, we've had like a lot of very reclusive people will have the last four months just to sit at home and draw comics i think we're gonna we're due for yeah. a dearth of really great comics without much oversight yeah, thinking man and, <laughs> and if the industry doesn't accept it and embrace it and they keep censoring it and pushing them away like they've done me then i don't know what to tell you man you're on your own <laughs> fuck you you know i i hope they come crawling you know, I'm going to fucking post their contracts online. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's why they won't work with you, man. I, I, mean, I don't give a fuck, dude. I, I'm already established. I make good money off my stuff. I don't need <laughs> any of them. Did you, you listen know? to my uh, my episode where I went through the NDA and questionnaire that the guy made me sign? 
you know, it's not, no, my, I'll, it's I'll not my channel. To. It's pretty yeah. funny. I air it out. It's pretty great. It's the craziest. Yeah. This oh, that's guy. great. <laughs> and I'm like, like I, no creator talks about who, what we make. Like nobody goes, hey, I make this or that. And if you're working for a company, you should be telling your friend next door, mm -hmm. hey, dude, they're fucking you. You know, yeah. Bendis, you think he makes what the, the artist does? Dude, no way. <laughs> Even the greatest artist. Mm -hmm. That's not right. Bendis should be like, hey, man, take half my check, give it to him so he could feed his kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just see what I'm saying? There's weird inequities that are going on. Like, this guy's considered a star, but this guy's not. Where it's like, I think the industry props him up, and then you just have this they all like protect each other so then you just have this derivative shit just continuously coming out um speaking of <laughs> derivative shit and this question might irk you uh, you've been this is, the, this is the last question it's the last question every time great. uh you've this been given the opportunity to work with any ip you wish what do you choose to work <laughs> with and what do you do with it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I would work with I would do Batman and Robin and make them gay immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many creators have wanted to do that? <laughs> I would make it I would make Batman a fucking choma. Yeah. Oh, Look, that's what Wortham thought was going on, right? <laughs> Batman Batman has to go on a, a offenders list. <laughs> no longer save people now i would just fuck them up they would never let me get his involved. super best friend Jesus. jeffrey epstein is like his like <laughs> exactly, investing in, in wayne tech and <laughs> like that's what yeah, uh, yeah, batman is the least death metal thing on the planet like dude i came from that music i was in a death metal band i had a death metal zine and to call like some rich dude <laughs> batman death metal Ugh, yeah makes me want to fuck vomit this is the guy that <laughs> don't call out my shit man <laughs> in the late 80s and early 90s there was that batman art book that came or it was like an art graphic novel and it was about jazz music and he describes rock music as like the sound of the beast and like all this other shit just shitting oh, on rock and roll 20? like it was the 50s or some shit <laughs> So, so oh, 20, this is the real music. Yeah, 20 years later, <laughs> it's like... the devil's music. What the fuck, man? I always talk shit about the old comics, how they were written by um, 20s writers. Like, some of those old Batman books are just impossible to read, because it's like, yeah, see? Like, Batman's beating up some TV fucking thief. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that Batman's cool than the new one. <laughs> or, like, where Superman separates, yeah, like... <laughs> Superman separates, like, a quarreling wife and husband, and, like, he... He like yeah, chastised exactly. the woman. <laughs> it's like saving yeah. dogs, truth, justice. And... <laughs> you should be a better wife. <laughs> He's all like, a... maybe don't piss him off so much. <laughs> <laughs> now after I save you, go wash dishes. That's horrible. <laughs> that means they're all sexist dude. You read some of that shit. It is kind of funky. You're like, oh, this is right. <laughs> and, and, and people are fine with projecting that onto like some characters of that era. Like people mm -hmm. like were like, oh, Captain America can have like. Like in the ultimate universe, when you make him like actually like someone from that era, but but the rest, right. it, they, the the whole view is to keep them current, keep them now. So like, I no, think it would be cool to write them, um, write it right. If I did like a Batman to write it like they were in the fifties, like how racist and fucking mean everyone was, <laughs> and Batman's just the same. He's just this fucking dick because he's a rich old white guy, dude. <laughs> Make me more like a, a fucking like a Bill Gates or something. <laughs> I don't know. It just it's it's just the same old thing over and over. I don't know. I don't want to work with any of that shit. Yeah. I'd like to make fun of it though. I'd like to like just take it to town. Like in the legacy, do something so mean that you just can't come back from it. <laughs> they would never work with you. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I got to work on um, Nash uh, with uh, Johan Peterson. Okay. I did a short story uh, with Blood Desert, and then I mashed them together with Nash. And that was kind of neat. Man, that guy's been doing that book for forever. It's like a European um, crime fiction. And it's kind of like a Miami Vice, but way more violent. But from from, it's Dutch. Okay. But yeah, he's great. And I got to, I got to. So that's going to be in one of my future books. So that was neat, man. That's like working with a legend to me. You know, that was that's as close to as IP as, as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he's like, you can do whatever you want with the character. I'm like, cool. <laughs> See, I like that. I like that he has that option. That he can just be like, yeah, go ahead, man, do a story. Mm -hmm. I have that option. Yeah, you want to do a blood test? Sure, man. Like, I like that. I have that. Or I can just be like, no. 
you know. Yeah. But as soon as you sign that contract, you don't have that option. Well, and Dave, you know? Dave Sim had that. Like, you lend Cerebus out to other creators. Like, you had a standing mm-hmm. rule that if you wanted to use them in something and you were an indie book, you could. You have, like, people like Eric. Yeah, look, at, look at Hellboy. He did the same thing. Yeah. He worked with a lot of indies. Eric Larson, too. Like, Eric Larson would have all these kind of up-and-comers on there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it was a good point about the uh, Hellboy stuff. Yeah, Mike Mignola did stuff with, like, Mike Allred coming up. and Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a better... Th- it's a better way of doing things in the industry. The way Hellboy did it, Cerebus did it, the way I'm doing it. I mean, it's just a better, it's better for us. Mm-hmm. It's better for the artist. It's not good for the industry. That's why they hate it. Because it cuts out the middlemen. It cuts out the distributor, the stores, and the publishers. Yeah. Like, which, and now the printer is, I pay the printer in the post office. That's it. That's it. Like, what else? I mean, I don't, why would I pay someone else to do what I could already do myself? Yeah, it's a lower level. I'm not going to sell... 30 million books but i mean i probably make more than they would look at the numbers man because they're not they're not making a lot on a book and if you're just putting that out in the world that's it you you did your 12 book series and you did this story you've wanted to do your whole life is now just sitting there you know until it becomes a graphic novel and then maybe it'll get picked up but like i can continuously push this material until i'm dead you know what I mean? It's not going to be as ephemeral as it would if it was in the mainstream market either. Mm-hmm. So there's just so many bonuses to just go on your own. And I don't even need Kickstarter. And I do really well. Really well. So I don't know. Listen up, kids. Do it. Dude, don't fucking just avoid it. I have to say just don't even put that in your brain like, oh, um, I, I need to work for DC one day. Because they're still holding that carrot. I see it. I see creators to this day going, oh, I would do anything to work for DC and Marvel. That's like, but if they actually did the research, they'd probably be better off working at McDonald's. And I'm not even joking, man. Mm. That's a, that's the fact. Because at least at a manager, McDonald's gets health care. Yeah, for sure, I mean, man. Come on. Like, well, open your eyes, man. It's not, it's not this magical thing. Comics isn't magic. Art isn't magical. It's a job that you should get paid for, just like tattooing or graphic design. For some reason, we've just all accepted in comics that we're going to, like, accept this it's a dream you're living your dream yeah. well, are you dude my dream is to fucking pay my rent yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean what the fuck dude? yeah <laughs> well i mean as long as money's not as money as long as money's not like the principal motivating factor then success can't be measured by book sales and so it's lucky how that works out <laughs> money is for me Money is a huge factor. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying it's like it, 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 yeah. it jives with their worldview. It has to because otherwise they'd look at their 12 issue series getting turned into a six issue series that no one reads that has like no fanfare yeah. and we see sales plummet like 30 percent every issue. Like if if they thought that, exactly. yeah, if it, if they were linked in their minds, it would be cognitive dissonance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like um, my people started discovering one last day. That shit's been, I did that shit 20 years ago, some of it. And people are just now ordering from my website going, whoa, what is this crazy comic? Where has it been? It's been here all along, dude. It's, I just don't promote it as much. So now people are finding it when they find my other work. But it's, it's hard to do that through stores and comics. You used to be able to, you used to be able to be like, oh, I I found this issue of Cerebus. Maybe I can try and find the run. And a lot of stores would actually have them. But since the failure of that, the back market, and you know it's just not feasible so now you get collected works mm-hmm. so like i don't know i just think that we're, we're we're still thinking backwards like we still think about floppies like fucking who cares if the floppy market dies i know that sounds horrible all these stores will die but maybe put half of that money and floppies into the magazine format mm-hmm. yeah, a system that's already there um there's yeah. already distributors there's already shelves put some of that ya stuff in walmart mm-hmm. stop being fucking pussies dude <laughs> yeah i don't get it like you all you oh we have this ya stuff but i'm not selling at walmart what are you doing who cares make some fucking money dude split it let's do magazine format books hmm. ya stuff boom flood the fucking markets like barnes and nobles has a magazine section yeah there's places all over the country that there's smoke shops with magazine sections so let's let's put some vibrancy in that market that hasn't had any comics in it in a while except for like what two heavy metal you know, what is how many long form comics are in magazine format? None. Yeah. One. 
Yeah, it's pathetic. What are you doing? Yeah, get your shit together, publishers. Like, so they're so myopic. It's just one more reason where I just laugh at them. And it's, it's just like it's stupid. Dude. At, at these big stores, they, they like it represents like a gateway drug to these people. Like, sure, they might start mm-hmm. off with like a Red Rooster or whatever book is like the the stuff that Brett Weiser is putting into Walmart. But like when you see that that will lead people to other books, maybe even into comic stores. Maybe like it, you know, I don't understand why we can't. Why do we have to just to keep accepting this over and over the same thing? Like it's just such a backwards looking thing. Like why not instead of doing variants, promote creators? Like there's just so many things where we could be doing that that could really help people in the industry. And we're not looking for the next Ninja Turtles. Hmm. No one is. They don't want it. They it's weird. It's like and they've hobbled, Dude, hobbled the digital industry. Like, they've intentionally hobbled it. They've made it so it can't be competitive. Uh, they charge yeah. the, the same cover price for the same content, and they don't put ads in it. Put fucking ads and slash that by half. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, it's all truism and comics is killing it. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I don't need to make money on my comics. Well, you should, you dummy. I don't care. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I know publisher. I saw dudes who work for Fantagraphics have like 10 bucks out. And this is like his seventh book. And he goes, I might have to get a part-time job <laughs> because at a fucking Starbucks because I'm not making any money off my books. What are you doing? Yeah. You should be promoting them every fucking second you get. Yeah. I should be so annoyed by you online. Were you talking about your fucking next book that's coming out on Fanagraphics, an established company, that I don't even, I have to snooze you because you're so fucking annoying because that's all I hear about is your new book. But it's like, no, you didn't do that, did you? You know what you did? You're like, you just sat there and expected people to go to the stores to buy it. Like, dude. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and get all, with it. All these- promo, 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 promo. It's everything. Yeah. If we don't promo, then what are you fucking doing it for? You just making books for your friends to read? I'm not. And it's not even like a, a, a right wing thing where it's like make money. It's like even if you're like a, like a leftist socialist, yeah. like if you're making fuck all, the state's getting fuck all to pay for social programs. Like you may as well aim to right. like what the fuck. Like, I mean, make some that, goddamn money. It helps you. It helps other people. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Or you're you like like selling right now isn't right. Yeah, starving is right. <laughs> okay, so a, a government-induced crisis that has given me nothing to survive in the three months, and I'm not supposed to try and sell some comic books. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just delusional, man. Like, what? You're fucking out of your mind, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's, the internet breeds that. It's just, it's illogical thought at its finest, just, like, amplified to the 10th degree. Yeah, and like, it's... Everyone it's on a- social media, the stupid is so, like... It's like they thrive in the stupid. And it's also, it, it, it's all inertia too, right? You're going to get flung off yeah. eventually. Like, it's destined to happen. It's all inertia and it's accelerating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, just keep doing what you're doing. Get Who off the ride and make some money. Make some comics. Get what off the I ride. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, fuck, dude. I'm happy I'm, I'm able to pay my bills at this point. And people are, they're saying you shouldn't do this kind of book. What? <laughs> I think more people are more worried about paying their fucking rent than they are about some fucking virtue signaling person online. You know, I, like our priorities are just so fucked, dude. Like, yeah, get it together. You should be praising anyone who's trying to sell anything at this point. At least they're trying to make it in this fucked up system. Yeah, you know, I don't. A, rise, a rising tide lifts ugh. all ships, man. That's what like yeah, it explains yeah. It's like, so well, much. Look, you know who's a you know it's a great example of that podcasting look at rogan look at look at them guys like they're what could have been comics Mm -hmm. and it's kind of moved to youtube like like they become that but they were divisive so it did and where rogan was inclusive Mm -hmm. does that make sense oh yeah he'll have have anybody on yeah so what instead you have in comics you have divisions where in podcast everyone everyone just does whatever and then you find your niche and you create it like like, I, I'm not going to bash the guy that does titty comics. I don't like them. I don't like cheesecake. I think it's stupid. I'll it's do it dumb. if the money's right. But people love it. Yeah. And that's their thing. You know, and that's good for you. You like seeing titty comics. That's your thing. I mean, I don't make them. I don't read them. But I'm not going to go online and be like, hey, bro, that's fucking burr, 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 you know? <laughs> so, oh. Could you imagine sending a direct message to a creator you don't know and tell them they shouldn't be doing something? 
Yeah, the, maybe it's a generational thing. I'm 45. You did art I back. Never fucking <laughs> in my world, especially a better like someone who's a higher in the industry, mm-hmm. direct message them like, like and be like, hey, you know what you said about farts? I didn't agree with. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so inconsequential. Whatever my opinion would be, mm-hmm. and then he's gonna look at me like, who the fuck is this guy? Fuck this guy. And if I had any chance of like getting anywhere with that dude in this industry, that's blown. So like, I don't, and I get those messages. I get messages like, "Why do you create that?" And I was like, "What?" I just ignore them. Yeah, you're out of your fucking mind, dude. Like, why are you even bothering looking at me then? It's <laughs> so weird. I don't. I, there's there's certain types of porn I don't like. Yeah, I don't fucking I don't look at that. You know what I mean? Like, it's so yeah. dumb and asinine. Like, like if you're just just gonna sit there all day and that's that's what bothers me about comics is everyone's talking 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 you've got store owners on tv show on youtube talking and they seem to say the same narrative the mainstream does and the mainstream creators have the same narrative and comics gate has its narrative and all of them are kind of dysfunctional you know kickstarter isn't the the solution Mm -hmm. you know longevity won't come from that longevity will come from imagination and creativity i've always said it yeah. Unless you come up with new walking deads for you to leech off of, you're never going to be successful because, you know, corporations don't create, they consume. Mm-hmm. So unless you use uh, creators like me, you start farming me, then you're just going to have like, like Alan Moore said, you're going to have movies based on cereal boxes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's what's look what's happening. It's what's happening. They're, yeah. they're dive. They're finding everything they can. All the, even like comics, like lock and key and all that they're getting, television series nobody read those books come on how many people fucking read that series lock and key i remember seeing them on the shelf i see them in the the quarter bins so like i don't know i think a lot of this stuff is propped up as you know comics art and shit in comics so that it can be eventually be optioned Hmm. i don't think you know what i mean i don't think a lot of it now it just exists as is in print only so it could be eventually optioned so they can weasel the rights away from the creator in some fucked up way or just do some yeah yeah <laughs> for so sure man. i'm rambling <laughs> <laughs> all that Sorry. it's all good five man. hour interview <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast dude um we'll probably wrap it up there uh we can get back yeah, to drawing yeah. some comics but it was a blast talking to you man and uh i'll kind yeah, of dude, you're a great guy it was cool <laughs> nice is... to see like-minded individuals out there man <laughs> we need more of a fight in the good fight <laughs> awesome man well thanks again for uh appearing on the show dude Thanks again to Adam for appearing on the podcast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if this gets a good response. Uh, I've got a whole bunch more. We went really deep in that interview, so I've got some more coming. If it, uh, if you guys like it and want to hear it, let me know. Uh, like and subscribe. Thanks again. We'll be back next week with some more uh, interviews and art.